Sword Art Online, an anime about being trapped in a virtual world, is one of the most popular anime of recent years. Opinions on whether it is a good anime or not may differ, but most people would agree that if a game like it would exist in the real world, they would buy it. Because of this, there obviously would be attempts to make a Sword Art Online game, even though a virtual reality MMO like it was in the anime is still far beyond our reach. So can a game like Sword Art Online Hollow Realization, which is neither in VR nor an MMO, be any good? Let's find out. For this I'm going to review the entire game, then judge it upon four key factors. The story, the gameplay, the variety and the visuals. How important those individual factors are overall is up to everyone to decide for themselves. In general is everything in this review just my opinion, so feel free to disagree with me in the comments. Another very important thing for this review is that I'm judging the version for the PC. That also includes all of the DLC and it also includes any changes that were made to the base game in the PC version, such as supposedly a low difficulty. Now first of all, once you start the game, you get to build your own character. Your own Kirito. You see, you might think this game is about your own self-insert character, which in probably any other game it would be. But in the SAO universe there can be only one self-insert character whom the entire world revolves around. So you might look like your own character, but you're actually just Kirito in disguise. That or they just try to shoehorn in character creation as a feature without putting in any effort. I mean, you even get to pick a voice for your character, but regardless of what you pick, any dialogue is still spoken by Kirito's Japanese voice actor, and that is even when you pick a female character. Because that doesn't totally ruin the immersion. Oh, and in the movie sequences you are flat out replaced by Kirito entirely, so yeah. Anyways, the story takes place not in Sword Art Online, but in Sword Art Origin, which reused all of the code from SAO, and it's therefore supposedly similar, but it's totally not a dev game, even though that was the one thing that made the original interesting. It is here that we meet the newest member of Kirito's harem, a 10 year old. Hold up. She is actually an AI, which technically would mean that she is even younger, but... <laughs> Anyways, the NPC girl seems broken, as she has only a quest that leads nowhere, and she has no character settings at all. So Kirito does the only responsible thing and searches for an original quest line that he thinks the NPC should have, even though there is nothing that would lead you to this assumption. And out of sheer plot convenience, he of course finds the original quest line and completes the first quest, setting you off to collect some stone. Stone, stone, stone. Does this sound boring to you? If so, then you are probably a normal human being because this has about as much depth as a fetch quest in World of Warcraft. Scratch that, I'm sure that if you read the quest text in those quests, they are probably more interesting. You collect those stones just because the quest said so. No other character motivation except curiosity for what's coming next. And it takes until way into the fourth map, out of five, until we are told anything else about this quest. Why? How is a player supposed to feel engaged enough to even play that far? It doesn't even help that halfway through the game they play the only trump card that they ever had, because this is a death game after all. But only for the NPCs, so the only one at risk is the bugged NPC. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Anyone that attacks an NPC gets a blue cursor, which makes it virtually impossible to play the game since you get attacked by every NPC, monster or probably even player at sight. So no one ever tries to kill an NPC as soon as the blue cursor is mentioned. Way to go! All possible tension, gone. So yeah, the story is a hot mess, so let's rather look at the gameplay next. As it were in the SAO from the anime, you traverse a huge floor, working your way towards the boss room in order to unlock the next floor. Now, of course, as a pseudo MMO, meaning that it is neither online nor necessarily multiplayer, and about that massive part we can argue too, it is heavily centered around combat. So this would be the first thing to get right. And surprisingly, the combat system actually is good. And in combat you kinda lock onto a target mob, 
can attack it with normal attacks or sword skills which consume mana, and you can dodge guard or even parry if the situation allows it. It's pretty simple to get into, but there are lots of little tricks to master, such as being able to use a sword skill for free when you activate it at the right time, or dodging an opponent's attack perfectly and counter-attacking to make them weak and increase your damage. And this could have made for some really good fights against challenging opponents, such as the floor bosses. Now, as you might have expected from the way I just said that, the challenge is sadly missing. The bosses that await you at the end of each floor that should challenge both your skill in using the battle system as well as your equipment and level are absolute pushovers. But this is a huge problem because sadly this takes away a very important aspect of an MMO which is the goal you're working towards. Why increase your level or hunt for better equipment or even just learn about the combat system if the boss keels over after a few seconds regardless? And this is in this game even more apparent than in an actual MMO, because in an actual MMO there is always a competition with other players, but keep in mind this is a single player game. The second problem is the variety. Just kicking monsters faces in 24-7, especially non-boss monsters which die in a few hits, gets old quite fast. And actual MMO games like World of Warcraft know that, at least nowadays which is why many quests offer you something else but combat to do, such as a bit of platforming, or a puzzle, or sometimes just a fight against a boss with unique mechanics. This game offers you quests too, but you simply accept them at the blackboard, and they have no story behind them because world building is overrated anyways, and in all of them, you just have to kill a bunch of generic mobs. But then we also have the events, which are littered all around this huge map, and to complete them, you of course kill more generic mobs. And there are reward chests too. Reward for what you ask? Well, killing generic mobs. In addition, sometimes you will need to complete a side quest in order to progress in the story, which consists out of taking a detour and then you freaking guessed it, beating up some generic mobs and return. And as you already established, those generic mobs aren't even a challenge. You can't make your entire game around fighting and then make the fights themselves boring. Oh, but my apologies. There is actually something else to this game, which is some sort of dating sim. When you are in town, you can go on dates with characters, hold their hands or even take them to your bedroom and have a pillow talk. Honestly, I have hardly any experience with dating sim games. However, I'm pretty damn sure that even in that aspect, it's bare bones. Dates boil down to your partner rattling down the same sentences over and over again while you either nod or shake your head as you're trying to get as close as they are comfortable with right now. It doesn't help either that the character models aren't very amazing, nor that the way they move their mouth hardly ever resembles what they are actually saying. <laughs> It's probably for the better that the game usually sticks to a visual nova style of storytelling. It's easy and cheaper too, since you can just reuse all of the assets and don't have to give a shit about lip syncing. So why the hell should you play this game even? The story is weak, the gameplay is dull with little to no variety, and they seemingly cut corners and save money wherever they could. And as dumb as this might sound, I could even give you a reason here. And that is that with the PC version for this game, you also get all of the DLC that was released. And to access it, you will need to play through the game's main story, as painful as it is. Now, you might ask me, why would I play through the game just to get more of the same in form of the DLCs? But to my surprise, and probably even yours, they actually improve massively in the DLC. It has challenging bosses, as well as some changes to the combat system to make it more fluid, actual puzzles and platforming, and a surprisingly fun duel mode to fight certain bosses or other players 1v1. Heck, it even has its own story arc that is far more engaging and better paced than the original, although that may not be much of an achievement. Now the question here is, did they learn from their mistakes with the main game and made an honest attempt to improve their product, or did they simply start giving a shit with a DLC, because otherwise people wouldn't buy that rubbish after the main game is such a letdown. My bets are on the latter, since this is already the fourth game in a series of SAO games, and they certainly had time and money to learn how to make a decent game after three tries. So let's dish out some grades, shall we? 
The story is weak and takes way too long to get going, so that's a 1 out of 5. The gameplay consisting of fighting and improving your gear can actually be quite a lot of fun as long as it stays challenging, which sadly it only does in the DLC. And I guess I would also have to count that dating sim stuff under gameplay, but I'm going to do it a favor and ignore that. 3.5 out of 5. The variety is essentially non-existent in the base game, but at least attempted in the DLC, so I'm going to give them a 1 out of 5. If a DLC wasn't a thing, I would have given them a 0 in this category, just so you know that I could have done that. The visuals are appropriate for the most part for an anime setting, however there were definitely several corners cut here, as most of the cutscenes are simply in a vision of a style, saving them tons of money on animation, and those that aren't look pretty bad. So it's a 3 out of 5 here and I'm being generous. All in all, I am disappointed in this game, not only because of what it is, but rather because of what it could have been. Damn, almost like the anime. The DLC shows that it could have done much better with this game in its entirety, and if you wouldn't have to buy and play the main game alongside with it, I would almost recommend buying it. As for now, this is still the best sword online game to date, even though the franchise would probably deserve better, so if you're going to get any of them, it should probably be this one. However, he is hoping that eventually, maybe with the advance of VR technology, we will get something better in the future. Thanks for watching this game review with a bit of satire. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in whether or not you should spend your money on it, feel free to leave a like. Also tell me in the comments if you like the game itself, who is best girl and why it is Lizbeth, and subscribe for more such videos in the future.